It has been a long time coming, but apparently uh, Richard Neal, the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, has filed suit to get Donald Trump's taxes. Just re- recap for us how we got here and why it took so long and should it have taken so long? Um, sure. So last year in the run-up to the midterm elections, everyone from Nancy Pelosi on down said that the first thing that the Democratic Party would do when they took control of Congress, uh, at least the House of Representatives in January, would be request Donald Trump's tax returns. There's a statute that uh, explicitly states that Congress has the right to access uh, those documents, they do so through the House Ways and Means Committee, and there's no justification required. It's just a complete right of the House Ways and Means Committee to request the tax return of any uh, person or business in the United States. They didn't do it in January. They didn't do it in February. They didn't do it in March. People like me spent a lot of time explaining why they should be moving much faster, why they had an unimpeachable case, so to speak, that they had uh, rights to those materials and that the delay was benefiting Donald Trump. They finally made a request in early April, but everyone knew that they were going to be told no by the Trump administration. Uh, For several weeks, there was a song and dance between the administration and Congress where Richard Neal would say, pretty please, please give me the returns. And the Trump people would be like, well, let's think about it. And then they would say no. Finally, a subpoena was issued in May. Uh, The Trump administration didn't do anything in response to the subpoena, which is illegal. And yet all throughout June and the end of May, Neal didn't sue. Finally, he sues right before July 4th. Uh, And now the big question is whether or not they're going to try to move this case as uh, rapidly as possible. There are legal avenues to accelerate a court system that is typically too slow but needn't be slow. Uh, We're going to see if the House Ways and Means Committee will do that. Um, uh, Why don't we start with what's your prediction as to whether they're going to do that? I mean, because I guess that maybe goes to what their strategy is. I mean, I know that... It only all they need to do is wait a couple of weeks and then August comes and then there's no uh, everything grinds to a halt when it comes to court cases. Uh, Just a little pro tip. If you want to um, not serve on a jury, August is a good time to uh, try and push your your hearings to uh, when they bring you out there, uh, because that's just where things uh, grind to a halt. But what's your sense? Do you think they're going to try and expedite it or is there a specific agenda to slow walk this? Um, I think there's a specific agenda to slow walk it coming down from the Speaker's office. I think Speaker Pelosi, for well-intentioned but, to my mind, completely inaccurate uh, reasoning, believes that impeachment would be a catastrophe. She believes, I think rightly, that if a court were to order Trump's Treasury Department to turn over Trump's tax returns, Trump would intercede and uh, would be in violation of the court order. And I think Pelosi believes at that point in time she would be compelled to uh, allow impeachment to go forward. Uh, The outcry would be so great, and she thinks impeachment's a trap. So I think that uh, Pelosi is going to do everything she can to slow walk it. I think that the complaint was well constructed by the attorneys in the House uh, General Counsel's office, but there was no explicit call for expediting. There were some, you know, winks and nods in that direction, but there was nothing explicit. And I'm worried that the uh, absence of any motion seeking to uh, for an expedited hearing by the House General Counsel reflects the fact that they report ultimately to the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, and she wants this to move as slowly as possible. The other interesting development is that New York State today uh, signed into law, Governor Cuomo did, a bill that would allow uh, the House Ways and Means Committee to request Donald Trump's New York state tax returns, which would not provide all of the information of his federal returns, but would include many elements that are uh, from taken from his federal taxes and would also include information about when he's been audited, which is the reason that the House Ways and Means Committee is going after Trump's taxes in the first place to figure out how the Trump Treasury Department is uh, auditing their boss, Donald Trump. So that was that's very worrisome that the House Ways and Means Committee is turning down 
uh, an open opportunity to get some very real information about Donald Trump's taxes. Wait, so they're they're turning it down? I mean, what is that? So that dynamic- or they're declining to exercise an authority that was signed into law today by that the House Ways and Means Committee can ask New York State's tax authority to see the tax uh, records of any New York State resident. Have uh, we, and obviously, have we, have, have we uh, are we sure that they've declined to do this, or are we simply waiting for them to respond to it? There's a statement from uh, Donald, uh, sorry, from a uh, Richard Neal spokesman saying that uh, they will not do it. Wow. And that's available only to the Ways and Means Committee, not to an individual, not to an individual uh, congressperson? Um, that's pretty stunning, right? I mean, that couldn't be more clear of an answer that there's just simply a, uh, a concerted effort to, I mean, slow walk. It seems like it almost might be a, uh, an, a, uh, a characterization that's too fast. I mean, they, yeah. uh, th- this seems to be, um, uh, something they, they specifically just don't want to happen. The, it might strike people as hyperbole, but I think Nancy Pelosi believes that the entire terrain of the 2020 election cycle should be about pre-existing uh, conditions and the Affordable Care Act. And I think that those are both or very connected and very important issues, so I don't want to in any way disparage their importance. But obviously, uh, people vote for president on a multiplicity of issues, and I think that congressional oversight, which were to point out that the president seems to be a serial criminal whose con- criminal conduct often undermines the country that he is nominally in charge of. I, I think that would bother voters. Uh, but I- Pelosi just really wants nothing to distract from her caucus's very decent, kind of uninteresting legislative agenda that keeps passing the House and getting no vote in the Senate and drawing no attention in either the traditional media or on social media. Well, this is the thing I can't figure out here, uh, Jeff, is that, and and maybe this baffles you as well, they have passed now, I think I, you know, as of a couple of weeks ago, uh, over 55 pieces of legislation. Uh, Some of it would be great uh, if it it actually um, uh, was to go through the Senate. I don't even think it makes it through the doors of the Senate frankly, never mind getting voting down there. Um, but my understanding is they've run out. Like, here's the thing I just do not understand. If uh, the idea was we need to focus on this agenda, which we're going to carry through, or we need to focus on other elements of oversight, and I, we're going to uh, take a break in a minute or two and uh, you can tell us about um, your theory as to how various parts of oversight could be worked into a broader narrative that would uh, be an electoral strategy in 2020. But I don't see any indication, frankly, of of this legislative agenda. Like, if this was the agenda, why did you do it all in the first three months? Why wasn't there a proper rollout? Why did you get sidetracked with Ilan Omar when you're rolling out H.R. 1? I mean, I, I, you know, I think there's an argument to be made that we should focus on this legislative agenda versus impeachment. I wouldn't necessarily agree with it, but I think it's an argument. But I don't see any evidence that that was the plan from the beginning. It just seems to be like, whatever. Like, somehow something's going to fill the time between now and... And, uh, the, you know, the, the 2020 election. And I suspect um, the Republicans are going to end up dictating what it is that's going to fill that time. I, I agree. I think that the Democrats believe that if they offer popular ideas, then the American people will support them for offering them. But the Republicans realize that if they do not engage with the Democratic agenda because it's popular. So if they ignore I, popular ideas from Democrats, those ideas are essentially irrelevant. Uh, and so, yeah, they passed a bunch of well-meaning, certainly highly popular bills uh, through the House that are dead on arrival and therefore have been widely ignored. All right, look, we got to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to talk about uh, your vision for oversight that can dovetail quite nicely with uh, pocketbook issues that uh, voters are going to be presumably voting on in 2020. I'm Sam Cedar. This is Ring of Fire Radio. We'll be right back with Jeff Hauser after this.